Happy National Tree Day, everybody, and happy fall solstice. I'm Frances Lippman, and I'm representing Creatively United for the Planet Society. And I'm Jonathan O'Riordan with Climate and the Arts. We gratefully acknowledge the Coast Salish people, plants, trees, waters, and lands on which we have the privilege to be working, playing, living, and speaking with you today. Welcome everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to the world premiere of our newest creative collaboration, Trees Matter. We'll be showing this seven minute feature followed by a chat with Le Camel Stolo Nation elder, Patrick Kelly, popular singer songwriter and Fairy Creek ancient forest activist, Luke Wallace, and eco-forest advocate, Kathleen Code. First, I would like to thank you, John, for contributing your many talents to this film, plus your involvement with Creatively United's popular Climate in the Arts webinar series, made possible through your late wife, Gail Reardon's special Victoria Foundation Legacy Fund. Yes, Francis, Gail was a cellist with the Victoria Symphony Orchestra, and she was very much wanted to have seen this film. Francis, you created and scripted Trees Matter, this is a very complex undertaking. It involved members of the Victoria Symphony, the Ballet Victoria, the Emily Stuckar String Quartet, and the Victoria Philharmonic Choir, children, and lots of moving parts, as many of your photos show. Can you tell us more about what went into this production? Well, thanks, John. Well, as you know, this was months and months in the making. And it started off first with a rough outline, which was provided to our collaborative partners to help them understand the story we wanted to tell and the objectives we wanted to achieve. And based on this, choreographer Paul Distrooper of Ballet Victoria created a brilliant 10 and a half minute piece called Matricide that debuted to live audiences this past summer to great acclaim. And prior to its debut, veteran videographer Orlando Carrillo and I captured sequences of this stunning ballet in Ballet Victoria Studios. Plus we recorded live footage of members of the Victoria Symphony, the Emily Carr String Quartet, and the Victoria Philharmonic Choir under the direction of musical maestro Peter Butterfield, all performing for the first time since COVID shut things down. And although we shared some of the same music with Ballet Victoria, the story and narration of why Trees Matter was woven in and around additional music and video footage, and everything had to be reworked to fit the narrative. And adding to the complexity was having to work within COVID protocols. So it was very elevating to hear and see music and dance being performed live as it had been quite some time. As a member of the uh, Philharmonic Choir, I can attest to that. All the musicians and singers said they were thrilled to hear applause again, even if it was just some of our own production team clapping. Yeah, it was very elevating and an incredible honor to be in the room with so many outstanding, talented people deserving a far more applause than just the few of us that were there. I'd also like to note that the fabulous narrator of our film is Kim Heske, who also happens to be your brother-in-law. So everybody, heads up, some of you watching this may be surprised by what you see and hear. Well, Francis, let's see and hear what you mean. Let it roll. Ah, yes, it all makes sense now. We share common roots, roots that lead back to the great mother of us all. It's all connected. An interconnectedness that goes far beyond what we see in front of us. Until recently, we knew so little, and yet family after family, generation after generation, shared this essential connection. <laughs> 
What a lovely sapling! It's important that we plant as many of these saplings as we can and protect and preserve these mature trees because it will take far more than 200 of these little saplings to do a portion of the work of one mature tree. This little sapling will have to survive longer than me to do the work that some of these mature trees do. It's very much like a non-stop dance. You see, trees are some of the hardest working members of our community. They do so much. They are the lungs of the planet. We breathe in and trees breathe out clean air for us to survive. Without trees, removing carbon from the atmosphere and purifying the air we breathe, we simply wouldn't be able to survive. Not only do trees look nice and provide shade, cooling, privacy, and shelter for humans, but trees also provide homes and food for thousands of birds, butterflies, and animals of every description and help buffer sounds and high winds. They are always communicating with each other. Their root system is part of a fabulous interconnected system of communication, much like the internet. In fact, it's the original internet, the internet of internets of all connectivity. Through their roots and the mycelium in the soil, they can notify other trees of dangers, such as pests, and share nutrients to young and ailing trees needing help. In some ways, it's like the myofacial tissue that extends throughout our bodies. Fortunately, trees know how to work together, so much so that they save cities hundreds of thousands of dollars by absorbing excess stormwater in their roots, preventing floods and even mudslides in some cases. If we aren't good ancestors now, what will we leave for this generation and for those to come? Our trees and forests already have to withstand so much. Trees may be resilient, but the ecosystem that supports them is part of the big picture. It's a delicate dance. Man's hand has been so very harsh. Now, the trees have to adapt to climate change and the droughts, storms, fires, and pests that come with it. And so do we, before time is no longer on our side. To think of all the stored carbon trees capture and retain in the soil to keep this planet hospitable. No wonder diseases and viruses are on the rise. I now see that everything begins from the ground up. How can we possibly expect to live healthy, happy lives in harmony with the natural world that we are part of if we don't respect the very earth that sustains us? Just think of the renaissance that will flower from our creative intelligence by moving from scarcity to abundance without harm. So many solutions exist. What an exciting time to be alive. So, dear hearts, as you know, your future and the future of this planet requires all of us to come together in collaboration because the best time for us to plant and protect trees is right now.
Well, thank you so much for being part of this world premiere. And in case you're curious, most of our outdoor footage and story was captured in Mount Douglas Park. The large clearing was in Langford by Lee Road. And the closing drone footage was the Elk Beaver Lake area. So now we'd like to welcome the proud grandfather of Ayla and Jesse, two of our adorable tree champions who were joined by their friends Cypress in the film. Welcome, Patrick, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Francis. You watched everything unfold from the sidelines, and I think everyone had huge smiles on their faces the day we captured these youth doing their part for this film. They were like absolute naturals, as you can see, and what you saw here was done without a rehearsal. It was incredible, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, they just uh, very much, you know, it, was, it resonated with their hearts, too, I believe. It was so beautiful, yeah. Yes. Now, Patrick, can you please share with us why trees matter in context of shui li, a term that is frequently used in First Nations culture? Yeah, the, uh, the term shui li in, uh, in Hal Kamelan uh, means uh, it's, it's a life force, a life spirit. And it also means everything is interconnected. And, you know, when you think about, um, especially the cedar tree, uh, which is so central to, um, to our world, and trees are always a part of our world. And we have a takat is our word for uh, trees. It's important for our very survival as a people. It's connected to every part of our lives. Uh, you know, the air we breathe, the, the canoes that we uh, travel in, the medicines we get, uh, you know, they're, they're places where we go in nature for, um, you know, to, to be at peace and to, uh, to just be, um, you know, in these beautiful spaces. And, you know, and that's been true for many, many generations of our, our uh, traditional ways, uh, you know, the cedar tree in particular. Um, I want to point out uh, this, this, for example, is, um, it's called a pothos, which is a, a baby basket. Um, this particular basket was uh, made by my grandmother, um, uh, Tassots, um, uh, my maternal grandmother. And, um, you know, she made it for me, um, you know, when, when uh, she was, uh, she was an avid basket maker. And I actually helped her make this because I actually picked the, uh, the, some of the roots to, to make the basket and the cedar slats to, to shape the form of the basket. Um, uh, uh, Jesse and Ayla's mother, uh, Chelsea, uh, was carried in this basket. Jesse and Ayla were carried in this basket and they will inherit this basket as well for to carry the next generation and so you know the um the the uh the forest and what it, it gives us is so critical to our very identity as people yeah that's a beautiful story how how touching to have that much um at your fingertips there still that your family can just share in. Thank you for sharing your family, by the way. Yeah. And thank you to everyone in your family. Yeah. We'd also like to thank the city of Victoria for their contribution to help make this film a reality. Well, we're going to move on to Ferry Creek. So thank you so much, Patrick. And we're going to talk a bit about what's happening on the west coast of Vancouver Island, about two hours away by car from Victoria. British Columbia is a precious biodiverse ecosystem and one of Canada's last remaining old growth forests. It is making international headlines as more than 800 people have been arrested in what could become Canada's largest act of civil disobedience in solidarity of the protection and preservation of this precious habitat, rich in life enhancing qualities. Joining us is Fairy Creek frontline forest activist and popular Canadian singer songwriter, Luke Wallace. Hey, welcome Luke, there he is. Yeah, Hi. thanks Francis, hey. Yeah, great, maybe you could give us a brief summary of, of your experience in joining the thousands of people taking a stand for Fairy Creek. Yeah, it's a uh, well, beautiful film. Thank you so much. And, and the music, it's, it's all so special. Pleasure to be here. Um, it's been completely remarkable and uh, sad and uplifting and hopeful and uh, terribly challenging at, at many days. But, um, but as you stated, we actually now have passed 
uh, a thousand, we're around a thousand fifty arrests now. Um, Kathleen can speak to that in a minute, but that you know makes this um, by a notable amount the largest act of civil disobedience and mass arrest in the history of the country. Uh, and this is all in solidarity with our uh, with the indigenous youth, um, the New Chalnut youth, and the the Dut youth who have been um, leading our movement on the ground in the protection of these forests. And uh, I mean, we could talk about so many things, but it's been remarkable the collaboration and the decentralized. Um, and democratic styles of leadership that, that, you know, we've managed to maintain and have literally thousands of people over the course of the summer. There were days in, in June and July where every Saturday, two to 3,000 people would come out. Uh, we would march up roads and um, state our, our right to be there as recognized uh, in the charter and, and by the courts. And um, we continue to uphold that right to protest and stand up for the, um, for the forest who, you know, who can't speak for themselves. And uh, we've gotten to a point now where, you know, two straight elections here in British Columbia, there have been promises to protect these exact trees we're talking about. And uh, it's such a small amount of forest left that is really um, in this ancient form, these 2000 year old cedars that would take everyone in this phone call to wrap their arms around. Um, it's a completely remarkable scene out there. And, uh, you know, a thousand arrests and people are still going, putting, putting their lives on the line and putting um, their lives on hold to protect these forests that serve so much for, um, for the planet, for, you know, the spiritual and cultural significance of the Indigenous people in that region. Wow, so well said, Luke. And and I understand that you're adding your gift of song to the whole experience in your uplifting way. Do you have anything that you'd like to, any lyrics or anything that you'd like to <laughs> share with us that you've been, you've been sharing that are tree related? Obviously, yeah, it was... all is. <laughs> <laughs> Totally. I mean, yeah, we've had some music's been such an incredible part of it, whether it's been the drumming uh, that brings us all together as we walk through and, and maintain peaceful and calm across police lines or the, you know, the late night rainy circles of music around the fire that were happening in the spring um, that just kept our spirits high. And, um, you know, I wrote one, uh, I wrote one and um, I'll just, I'll, I'll recite it to you. And it's been something we've been doing as a call and response. And it actually, the first time we sang it was escorting a handful of police officers who had snuck into the camps. We peacefully escorted them out, um, you know, stating that they should be identifying themselves as they're walking around camp. And, uh, you know, the, the song we sang was, who are we protecting? And uh, it was, who are we protecting? Uh, the sacred sister, the mother of the mister, the daughter of the sea. What are we protecting? The big old trees the ancient forests, the salty sea. And what are we protecting? The water in the river, the good life giver, the water in me. And it's, uh, it's been a beautiful moment to, to be in such a space of creativity and art and, and love and all the complexities of it too. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's far from a perfect movement, but we've managed to you know, love each other enough and love the forest enough and be loved by the forest enough to maintain our presence and maintain our, our sense of optimism and commitment to protecting this land. Oh, I can't thank you enough. And I know I'm speaking on behalf of so many people for the hero work that you're doing and your words and your actions. So beautiful. I know the last rally that I attended at the legislature was was so uplifting. I left with the biggest smile on my face and yet we were there, you know, because of a very challenging issue. And yet it was just like the solidarity was incredible. So, and and yeah. so is there any advice you'd like to give to anyone? Yeah, absolutely. So there's, you know, one of my sort of tasks that I've taken upon myself is to figure out how to plug people into this movement because there's so many different people with skill sets and. Um, and so without being able to cover all of them today, um, I would just say that uh, the greatest mechanism we have outside of being at the blockade, which if you haven't been out to Fairy Creek, I encourage you to go, it will change your life. But if that's unavailable to you at this time, um, I would say that the next, uh, the next greatest thing that will be, you know, be the mechanism of change for us in the movement is uh, international media. Um, and, and if we can get international media on top of this, I did an interview this morning with an Austrian uh, news outlet. Um, and you know, the, the, they're on it. And the Seattle Times is out there right now. And um, things will shift whether we like it or not. Uh, things change when the BC government and the federal government are pressured and essentially embarrassed by international media. And that's when the force will get protected is when the Guardian and the New York Times and the Seattle Times and everyone are writing about how this is a massive movement and these trees need protecting. 
And it can't happen soon enough, can it? Oh my gosh. Thank you. Down to the wire. Yeah, great before you. So much. Well, we really appreciate that. We've got Kathleen Coat here as well. Now, thank you, Luke. And Kathleen has given her heart, her soul, her time and her energy to being a frontline voice for what must seem like forever now, Kathy. Thank you for all that you have done and continue to do to bring to the forefront the need for sustainable forest practices. What would you most like to briefly share with us and what can you recommend people can do to help? Well, first of all, Francis, I'd like to thank you, Jonathan and Luke for, for your cre creativity and, and art and music and song and dance and, and those things that uplift us because it, this is really a movement that's really dedicated to creativity, making, making things happen out of the chaos. Um, and we need that so badly. So thank you all for that. Um, it has been uh, an incredible year, uh, year plus of, of change and, and feeling our way through this, um, this what has turned into you know, a, a messy thing because we thought we were just changing things to save the trees. And now it turns out that we are you know, uh, fighting for indigenous rights and title and sovereignty for biodiversity, for client change, for social justice, economic justice, you know, the, the partnerships with, uh, with government uh, and industry, um, the RCMP behavior in the face of uh, court directives. So there is so much on so many fronts that we are trying to attempt all at once. And it's, and it can be a little overwhelming at times. So it really helps when people can come into the movement and just slot themselves into some place where they feel passionate and where they can feel that they can make a difference because everybody makes a difference in this movement. I can tell you that I have seen some amazing uh, life changing moments with people who have come up uh, to Ferry Creek and it just has opened up their eyes and, and, and deepen their connection with, with the environment. And that's what we all need. We all need to remember those roots as was so beautifully displayed in your film, because um, that's, that's where it is. And, you know, as the RCMP pushes off the mountain, then industry is quick at coming in and, and they are now uh, clear cutting those trees. So it, it is heartbreaking in, in that sense. Um, but I also want to tell you about my association with Wildwood Ecoforest. I'm on the board of the Ecoforestry Institute Society. I've been there since 2014. So trees and old growth have always been near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's important work that we're carrying on. Uh, the former owner, Merv Wilkinson, is renowned for his work in ecoforestry and the way that he managed this forest according to ecoforestry principles and practices where he could harvest from the forest and still maintain those intact ecosystems, which are precious to us if we want to continue to breathe, if we want to drink clean water, if we want to have habitat for our wildlife and all the diversity and medicines and things that, that sustain us in life. Um, and we are really proud to be working with Indigenous partners then to you know, explore uses of the forest and how we can bring this awareness to the public and, and make sure that everybody from, from the kindergartner kids to, to uh, forestry professionals can come and learn at Wildwood because what we have is a working sustainable model of forestry. I love that. And it's aptly in the cedar area of Leeds. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. It's, <laughs> it's not too far away. That's and, right. It's in and, our backyards. <laughs> and and I, I don't know about COVID right now, if you're still offering tours, but if you get a chance, visit the website. I know there's, be there's tours of this beautiful property. Thank you, Kathleen. Well, and, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Absolutely. And here's where you can find more information. I know that these organizations really value whatever help they can get. The bottom line is that trees matter. And I can't thank you all enough for joining us. And we really encourage you to share this film, share this information with groups, schools, families, and friends. 
and uh, Trees Matter will be posted to creativelyunited.org and to Creatively United's YouTube channel. And be sure also to check out the event calendar on creativelyunited.org so you can learn about other tree events, et cetera. There's so much stuff happening on our calendar and on this website that is a free community solutions hub. And be sure to sign up for our newsletter so we can let you know about our upcoming launch of season four of Climate in the Arts free webinar series. So before um, uh, we leave you, I'd like to read you a poem. It, we just have a moment and I just love this poem. Stand tall and proud, sink your roots deeply into the earth. Reflect the light of your greater source. Think long-term, go out on a limb. Remember your place among all living beings. Embrace with joy the changing seasons for each yields its own abundance, the energy of birth, of spring, the growth and contentment of summer, the wisdom to let go of leaves in the fall, the rest and quiet renewal of winter. This is from Alain Shamar, Advice from a Tree. So trees matter, and so do you. Bye for now, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in. Happy National Tree Day. Thank you, everybody. Which should be every day, as we know. Thank you all. An interconnectedness that goes far beyond what we see in front of us.